Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from reviews of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, really wherever our whims take us. Future State Superman, well, regular Superman. Superman, Worlds of War, that's the full header. I am here for I believe that I find myself going against the grain on this one, so I really want to hear what you think. We shall converse in the comment section down below about a story that was promoted as an action slugfest, but turned out to be a meditation, a musing on the very mythology of Superman, and what he represents, and how many view him. Get ready to think about Superman. But before we get started, I'm Sasha, and if you're enjoying this content, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, join us on this comic book journey. This tale comes to us from Philip Kennedy Johnson, with art by Mikael Janine, and the color is once more by Jordi Belair, who also did the colors over in the Future State Wonder Woman book. The cover is exciting, Clark fighting monsters, some of whom clearly tower over him, bloodied, cape ragged, in chains, gladiatorial style combat in play against the blood red sky as Mongol watches, this in the background of War World on his throne. This cover screams, let them fight, and it's exciting and compelling and probably part of the problem as to why some were disappointed with this title. Cause this action sentiment is not exactly carried out through this story in the book. There's action in the later stories though. This cover isn't exactly cover bait in that this doesn't happen, but it is if this was the genre you were expecting, at least for this story in the issue. Also let us all note that they put his crest on his undies as well as his breastplate. Noted. We open on Smallville, now with a larger sign orbiting that one as it were on top saying Krypton. The town has become a focal point slash is cashing in on being the home of one Superman aka Clark Kent, but it's the Superman aspect of his life and persona that is being highlighted, and also idolized and commodified. Our tale is appropriately enough titled The Many Lives of Clark Kent, and we follow our protagonist, a young girl named Sadie, as she makes her way down the Smallville streets. The main street is just a tourist trap. You here to worship at the alien altar too, along with all the other idolaters? Next sweetie, made from stones found the rocket field. There is a church of Krypton, preachers reading Clark's old science reports and more as if they were scriptures. Our protagonist passes all this, walking through fields and going through panels that give us an indication of the tone of the world and what has happened before. Little clues like the roadside memorial to Superman, the Superman come back graffiti on the water tower. Finally she gets to her destination, a memorial to Clark Kent, with the L crest as the plaque that states the while it is for Clark, most remember him as Superman. It's a gathering of people coming together to share their stories about how they were saved by Superman. Hey, welcome. Where'd you come from? Gotham, but I was from Metropolis before. There's a lot of Metropolis refugees here. Okay, so this takes place after John bottled the city of Metropolis, which obviously displaced only the people within the city, but those who lived outside of it, you know, can't get back to their families and homes. There is understandably some bitterness surrounding this and skepticism surrounding John as Superman. It's actually more mild than you'd expect. We covered future states, Superman of Metropolis in other videos. If you missed that card, the link as always. This story actually even has an editor's note directing you back to that future state issue. Those are not overly common or prevalent in this the series, so I noticed it. I was shook. So the gathered begin to tell their tales. The first to rescue so fast that he was never seen. My entire family was with me that day. We all would have died if it wasn't for Superman. Literally all of us. We never even saw him. The next was saved while he was a young boy by Superman, and he got some face time with the Man of Steel. It's weird. I don't remember the fight at all. What I remember is him talking to me for a really long time after. He had this really calm, quiet voice kept me from freaking out while we looked for my dad. I'll never forget that. And as the talk goes on, the topic turns to what exactly happened to Superman? Where do people think he is? I think he's straight up dead. Dang, cut right to the chase. This person believed that Superman died in some cataclysmic battle the world never knew about. That Superman had fought so many threats that there must have been many that weren't recorded or documented and that the world never saw. They believe that during one of these occasions, he was simply overwhelmed. I like the deceased vibes this panel is giving. I think he's dead too. After what his boy did to Metropolis, I don't see how he could still be out there. He would have done something. Something. So we see that what John has done is undermined faith of Kryptonians, activating or perhaps reactivating fears that they are overlords, come to dominate. All in the same pose, don't think I didn't notice. That if Superman and Supergirl survive, there could be more. As the talk goes on, it becomes more and more conspiratorial. Seeing the cosmos with their DNA, overriding all technology with, with Brainiac AI. I think what John Kent did to Metropolis is just the beginning. I think Earth is well on its way to getting remade in Krypton's image. Sadie is not buying any of this. I'm sorry, I guess none of this sounds right to me. 
I can't believe so many of you think he's dead. He only ever tried to give us hope. Where's your hope? So the talk again shifts. If he's not dead, then where is he? What has he become? And then we get some theories, some out there theories. One member believes that after absorbing a lot of solar energy, he ascended and has become an energy that surrounds everyone, a solar wind. That he was a traveler, an immortal traveler that had done this before, bringing action-packed justice to many worlds, and that he has gone off to do it again somewhere, a warrior avatar of justice. This is met with pushback by some who feel that the warrior aspect of Superman is overemphasized, and that instead he was gentle by nature and forced to fight by the most dangerous creature of all, man. We're the one who forced him into that life. They believe he left to continue his works of peace, that he's cultivated a paradise, and will come back once humanity has proven itself worthy of it. That he is seeding a race of altruistic super beings who will come back to make the earth the world that it was always meant to be. Sadie is appalled and feels that no one there understands Superman. He wouldn't want any of this. We didn't call him Superman because of what he can do. We called him Superman because of who he is. He's us. He's the best of us. Truth, justice, and the American way. He taught us that those words could mean something. He's so much more than his powers. It wasn't his powers that made him so- Um, actually it was. Superman was the best because of his powers. Sorry. Ah, the classic nerd debate. Is Superman boring and overpowered? Is Superman interesting because of his powers? Is he smart? Is he not? So many flashbacks to conversations had, and potentially flash forwards. What's being debated here is the core of Superman's worth. Is it just that he can punch things and is super strong? Or is it more the feelings he inspires, symbol of hope and the like? Does it have to be one or the other? Can it be both? Both is good. Sadie gets upset and so she prepares to leave and is then asked, how did Superman save her? Superman didn't save me. Clark Kent did. The boy who upset her in the first place says that she's wrong. That Superman is the strongest there is, and that's why he always won. And so, with only a few pages left, we see our very much alive Superman on War World, forced to battle before Mongol. See what remains of Superman. Oh my, look at that thigh. That thigh alone could win a fight. Is that a ponytail, Clark? Is the mullet back? Is it that time again? Please say yes. And so as the charge begins, we cut back to Sadie. I remember you. I won't lose hope. Next, the many deaths of Superman. Okay, let me be upfront. I adored this, but I can understand why others wouldn't. This story is largely an examination of the impact of Superman, as well as seeking to identify and put forth the core of his appeal, center his character as it were. Who is Superman? What does he mean to people? What can he mean to people? Why is he needed? And what impact has he left on the world as examined through the lens of a world that has lost him and does not know what happened? The various viewpoints were all ones that have been thrown around in Superman debate. Superman, the avatar of justice, Superman the unknowable, Superman the god, kind Superman, aloof Superman. The evil Superman is absent, which some of you is an oversight. However, evil Superman makes an appearance every other week, it feels like. So it was actually nice to not see that one try it out front and center for once. Also, John is fulfilling that role in the story for some, at least at this point in its timeline. Shrink in the city, the first logical choice. Now, this was a lot of talking and pontificating about Superman. Big panels with lots of word bubbles. The whole story isn't like that, however, as it is balanced with sequences of little or no dialogue or narration boxes at all. If you're not here to discuss or ponder the merits of Superman, then this could have been a big disappointment. Personally, I liked the framework and how it presented all these different individuals coming together to discuss their experiences and theories. It gave a reason for the dialogue that made sense for me. It worked well by playing with the ideas people come up with in the absence of evidence or the correlations they draw with what little they have. It had a bit of a lower Dex TNG episode vibe, the episode, not the series, where you see the impact of your main cast through the lens of other people, ordinary people. You got to see the different relationship they have with Superman based on the role that he played in their lives. Now, of course, for me, it helps that Sadie's viewpoint, the one that seems to be being set up as the correct viewpoint, is one that I largely adhere to. Not entirely, but it has a lot of facets and elements of Superman that I enjoy. That being that Superman is more than his powers, and they are actually potentially the least interesting or important thing about him. Also, the idea that Clark Kent is an integral part of Superman, and to be able to fully grasp him, you you have to have an understanding of Clark. That when you divorce him from his human element and make him only Superman, it can get weird. As can ideas surrounding him. Is that subtle shade at the previous run at the time of this recording by Bendis, where Clark ditched his secret identity because reasons? Mileage varies, but hey, it's possible. Or I could just be reading into it where there is no drama. Who knows? I am a salt queen. Now, if this story had taken some other avenue or stance on Superman, for example, he's a horrible oppressive force, or the whole he's all muscle, no heart, then perhaps I would have enjoyed the story less. Even though either way, 
I do like the concept of viewing Superman through all of these other people's eyes. The thing is, this makes this issue not only talky, but almost 100% set up. And while it talks endlessly about Superman, he is barely in it. Now I would argue his presence is keenly felt, and that a character doesn't need to be front and center to be an important part of a story, or even to drive the action. Conversely, a character being there doesn't guarantee you'll get a strong sense of them or understand them looking at you, Superman of Metropolis. However, I can see wanting more Superman in your Superman Worlds of War comic. Paging Superman, uh, Superman to the comic, please. Also, Superman, Worlds of War, where's the war? <laughs> now some will wrangle at the lack of action because comics need action, while others could be annoyed because the cover, well, it set you up to expect that. And then, well, it didn't really deliver. Some might feel a bit misled. Even if the other stories have their fair share of action, it's the main story that's supposed to be the draw. Future states, Superman, dissertations and musings, Superman, reading a book on the cover. Ultimately, this comic spoke to me because it seemed to enjoy Superman and find him exciting and see lots of potential and ideas surrounding him. It had lots of ideas about what and who he could be, but also seemed to have a firm belief in who he is and who he should be. And that's a strong foundation for a character to have. So when I learned that this was the author who is now taking over the Superman title at the time of this recording, whereas before I had no feelings, now I'm at least slightly hyped. Because he clearly loves the character and that should bleed through. Again, if you don't like his take, then this could be terrible news. I can also see this coming across as slightly preachy or judgy if you're not in the camp of agreeing with a lot of it. So I'm really curious how you found this one. This comic made me feel hopeful and happy. The Superman who's here to help and inspire, and is a man choosing to do good because he is good, but also is human in spirit, powerful in form. And all the struggles that come from that is a take I really enjoy. I was actually smiling once I was done reading this one. Like I said, it felt like the book loved Superman. Like it was Superman giving me a big hug. I think the action will pick up and we'll get some sweet thigh crushing gladiatorial combat. I'm willing to wait for it. But again, I can understand feeling cheated. This comic also has three backups within and things are starting to come together if you're reading all of these. We have another Mr. Miracle backup. Last place we had one of those was Superman of Metropolis. And we have a Midnighter backup where we learn more about Nero and Trojan. Trojan Solutions, the company, yes. Also, this one was just a trip. The art in it really grabbed me. 90s action homage to the max. Extreme heads coming off. Which, given the fact that it's the Midnighter who debuted in the late 90s, very appropriate. It assumes that you know a lot about him, though, like how its tech works. So I hope you do. The last story is a Black Razor story, and all of these are dealing with and around War World. So in short, Future State will probably make a compelling omnibus, where it can all come together and you can just go through it. I'm still determining how I feel about it as an ongoing event. How it ranks as a reading experience on that front. So tell me, how did you feel? Did this comic lie to you? More action please? More Superman please? Check please? Do you agree with Sadie's take? Or do you agree with one of the other characters or have a different one entirely? I need to sit down. He's b -b -b boring Joke's on you, I'm already sitting. Please, as always, tell me all the things. And while you're doing that, please also do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking some time of your day to spend discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.